While we were at NVIDIA's big GTC event earlier this week, we also got a chance to check in with some of NVIDIA's key partners, companies that can help bring out the value of their high-end chips. For example, Cisco announced a new AI factory architecture. They're developing something with NVIDIA to help enterprise customers deploy, manage, and secure their AI infrastructure. Yesterday, I got a chance to speak with Jensen Wong. He's the founder and president and CEO of NVIDIA, along with Chuck Robbins, the chair and CEO of Cisco, about this new announcement and what it means for AI security. Take a look. Well, here's a treat. We have Jensen Wong and from NVIDIA, of course, and Chuck Robbins from Cisco, emblematic of the partnerships that we saw. These are exploding, meaningful partnerships. Jensen, what's it like to partner with Chuck to do some of these things? I need to know how these things work. Well, you can't partner with a nicer guy, <laughs> and, and you can't partner with a company with more might and more domain expertise. You know, there are two things that we're working on together, and both of them are completely revolutionary. The first one is, as you know, we've been inventing AI for the clouds, but we want to bring AI to the world's enterprise. And AI reinvented the entire computing stack from compute, networking, storage, the operating system, and the way you develop the applications on top. And yet today's IT infrastructure, enterprise IT infrastructure, is basically the same as, as it's been for a long time. And so Chuck and I are going to go and work on re-racking that entire infrastructure. And there's, you know, there's a few billion dollars worth, a few trillion, <laughs> a trillion, dollars, yeah, a trillion. dollars worth of infrastructure built around the world, and we've got to go reset that. That's the first thing. The second thing we're working on uh, is and, and this is an area that, that Cisco and, and Chuck's been in for a long time and it's new for us, is telecommunications. As you know, telecommunications mm. is also built on data centers. And that data center uh, is about to get reinvented with 6G and AI. And so the two of us are working on well, a whole new stack for that. Any one of these would be a trillion dollar opportunity. I know that since you bought Splunk, you're even better at these things. So what's it like to work with Jensen and the NVIDIA team and what's it, how is it additive to Cisco and by the way to Cisco shareholders? Well you, you can't find a nicer person to partner with than Jensen. Um, it's, been, it's been fascinating. So Jensen called me probably 14 months ago and, uh, and I said you're the king of the world, why are you calling me? And, uh, and we, we sat down and started talking about the enterprise opportunity then and we, we talked about the fact that our technology stacks are super complementary. So we have, even though he does have a bit of a competition, some of your products. Yeah, but we talked about it early on, and I said, if our teams are going to do it, we're going to position our networking gear. And he's like, fine, do it. That's fine. You're with a me. lover, not a fighter. <laughs> well, he is. We're both lovers. <laughs> we're both lovers. And so, and, and so now, we're partnering on networking. Yeah. Nvidia. So the last Nvidia, announcement we made. Exactly. <clears throat> He's, he validated our networking within their validated architecture. I think we're the only ones you validated. Yeah. And then we agreed if a customer wanted it, we'll build an Ethernet switch based on his silicon. So it's, we're, we want to give the customers what but they want. People at home who are, they're looking for business and consumer, they may understand this is actually far bigger than consumer, right? Much I know it hurts to say that because we have consumers watching, but it's true. It's much bigger. And when you, you think about the security implications of this transition that Jensen was talking about, they're going to be huge. And when you get into just the, the, the initial AI inference applications are one thing where you're going to need all this new modern infrastructure. But the second pa phase is this agentic AI that we talk about and the, the need to reconstruct the underlying internet logic to actually enable agents to communicate with each other in a secure way and actually achieve the vision that has been laid out for agentic AI. That it's a complete restructuring. Is the system that we have now uh, ready for agentic AI or do we have to throw the system out, put an all new system in? Well, as you know, the computers that people run AI on are the ones that we're sitting in front of. That's what it looks like. And those systems are in none of the world's companies. But then we have to and place so the whole world in this trillion. I mean, that's a two, three, four trillion dollar opportunity. No question about that. Yeah, yeah it's a. It's you agree a, too? It's a, yeah, I mean, it's a giant journey, <clears throat> and we got to start it. And so we, that's why I called Chuck. You know, nobody knows enterprise computing better than Chuck. And so, so you know, we uh, we need to go and and uh, re-rack the whole world's companies. I love that term, it's very, it's, a, it's per persuasive. Yeah. Right, I mean. Uh, well, you well, walk in these data centers, what is it? It's just racks and racks of technology. Yep. And uh, I think the, uh, you know, we believed uh, a year ago 
that the enterprise opportunity was going to dwarf what we've done in the cloud space. Right. And I've heard you say the same thing recently. So we think this opportunity well, is even bigger. Put your business roundtable hat on. Where, how do we help as a country? I asked Jensen this earlier. The country has to get behind you. The administration has to get behind you. This is also a competitive world. How are we doing? Oh, I think we're winning right now, for yeah. sure. I mean, look at this guy and, and what we're doing in this space. And then the ecosystem that you see all around us here that's been built up around the AI factory notion and, uh, and clearly we're winning. And I would say, based on the conversations I've had with the administration, I know you've had a lot, uh, they, they want to protect that lead and they want us to win. And I believe that their policies that they're going to implement will, will ensure that that happens. And, but if uh, you're gonna put a 25% tariff on hardware, it could end up being on hardware, that is an impediment to growth. Well, we'll see where they land. I think that uh, you were talking about tariffs earlier today. I think there, there's gonna be a lot of logic behind where they end up. Uh, I think that the reality of their thinking around reciprocal tariffs and, and some countries that perhaps are treating us not as fairly as they should, I think that's, that's an area that they, can, they should certainly go after. But I think they also want to make sure that whatever they do, that they maintain this lead that we have and make sure that we win the AI race. Well, you are both leaders of, the Ameri of American tech, of course, international, and you use international business. Are we... Um, uh, are the, is American tech, is the conversation as important as, do people get it? Do you think the average American gets how important what we're discussing is to their lives? Well, there, there, are, two, there are two ways to answer that. Well, first of all, you, you were talking about international, Jim. I, I think that, that um, in no initiative and no foundational technology that I've ever known, uh, since the internet has the world uh, and the leaders realize the importance of artificial intelligence to them. And the reason for that is because no country wants to outsource and let somebody else advance their intelligence. And so this is really, really important to, to every country and that's why the conversation is so relevant. Uh, with respect to, to uh, uh, people, people uh, you know, across the country, I do think that artificial intelligence as a, as a technology is in the forefront of almost every conversation. And so everybody knows about the technology and why it's important, I think. Um, it's impossible for them to realize the social and the economic and the industrial implications of artificial intelligence. But at the same Here, we're mostly talking about the industrial implications. Right, but at the same time, the notion of, oh, GDP, the Federal Reserve, the, where the economy, this, this transcends all of that. That's just not as important as we used to think. Well, five years ago, the, the, we thought 5G was super important. And this dwarfs the whole discussion around 5G. Every time I went to Washington, we were talking about 5G and Open RAN and all these things, and they were all worried about it. No one talks about it anymore. It's but all this about this is AI. unbelievably positive. We have to it put is. a value judgment on it. Don't we have to decide to either believe or just think that, that the world is flat? Everybody is so excited about it because we all see the wonderful potential of it. You know, whether it's for science or healthcare or Right. Just economic produ productivity. I mean, we all see the insane opportunity ahead of us. You know, of, of course, there's also the wonderment of it. And right. You're that's here, my, right. You know that that's the word yeah. because that requires our imagination. Yeah. And we're, we got to get our heads bigger. We have to somehow, you guys, you're the leaders. You have to explain how important this is to our country and the world because it is not, we're trapped by the four walls of our current intelligence. Yeah. Well, if you think about <clears throat> one of the most powerful things of this partnership is we come together and we actually simplify enterprises' ability to deploy AI applications, that's when you start unlocking the benefits in healthcare. So the, the enterprise customers need help understanding how do I do this simply and secure, and how can I do this in a way that I feel good about it and I trust it and it's secure and I'm not at risk with my employees or customers right. data and that's what we're going to do together and I think that's when you're going to see this healthcare the the thing you talk about all the time with science and healthcare and, and revolutionizing Revolution. cures for diseases as an example 
we need to go help them build the infrastructure that's going to allow them to do that. To do that, we need enterprise IT. That's correct. Yeah, that's why enterprise IT is such a major And then that plus. benefits the human in the United States right. every day. Well, I want people to understand that. And you both of you are great communicators. Chuck Robbins, who is the CEO of Cisco, $400 billion in 2000, but now much bigger in terms of what you can become. Much, much thank bigger. You. Much. And of course, Jens Wong, the video CEO. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being the leaders that you are in coming away. All right, I hope you're all doing well today and staying calm in this market. The S&P finished the day slightly lower and Nvidia finished the day nearly nine tenths of 1% higher. Today was Nvidia's quantum day at GTC. Jensen Huang said that he was wrong back at CES regarding the timeline between now and when we would have useful quantum computers. He also joked about how he didn't realize that certain quantum companies were already publicly traded and that he was surprised that his comments back in January had such a massive impact on those company stocks. Earlier this week, Nvidia also announced a new quantum computing research center in Boston, signaling that this technology will be important to NVIDIA moving forward. I do want to remind you all that NVIDIA has been involved with quantum computing for some time now, as they've been working with researchers to develop quantum supercomputers. And so I don't view quantum as a threat to NVIDIA's dominance because they have been aware of and also involved in the quantum computing space for some time, even though they haven't said very much about it publicly. Also today, there have been many headlines talking about the fact that NVIDIA intends to invest hundreds of billions of dollars in US-based production over the coming years. And as Jensen said this week, NVIDIA is already in TSMC's Arizona plan running production silicon right now. This is very good news. For a long time, there's been an overhang on NVIDIA stock, and that overhang was the looming threat of a potential conflict in the Pacific. Remember, NVIDIA's chips are manufactured by TSMC, and about 90% of the world's most advanced chips, including NVIDIA's, are currently manufactured in Taiwan. And so, by bringing some of this manufacturing into the U.S., they're de-risking NVIDIA's future, as well as de-risking the future of the entire semiconductor industry. Looking ahead, we have another keynote from Jensen at Computex the night of May 18th, and then NVIDIA's next earnings report is scheduled scheduled for May 28th. So much was revealed at GTC this week that I honestly don't think I could recount all of it if I tried. We learned that demand for Blackwell this year is substantially greater than the demand for Hopper was last year. We learned about NVIDIA Dynamo. We learned about so many new partnerships, including a partnership with GM for NVIDIA to develop their driverless fleet, as well as a partnership between NVIDIA DeepMind and Disney. NVIDIA is telling us very clearly that the age of robotics is upon us and that they are at the center of all of it. If you want to build robots, you first have to build the AI for those robots. If you want to build driverless cars, you first have to build the AI for those cars. And so every company that has a real world factory will also have what Jensen refers to as an AI factory. And this applies to every industry. Therefore, Jensen is talking about NVIDIA's technology eventually underpinning the entire $120 trillion per year global economy. And of course, Jensen gave us an update to NVIDIA NVIDIA's data center product roadmap. Blackwell Ultra is this year, then Rubin in 2026, Rubin Ultra in 2027, and Feynman after that likely in 2028. And with the performance improvements NVIDIA is delivering from one generation of product to the next, companies are going to continue spending like crazy to purchase large numbers of NVIDIA's latest products. Back in February, Jensen told us that Blackwell allows AI factories to generate 25 times the number of tokens generated by AI factories that use Hopper. And now, with the introduction of NVIDIA Dynamo that was announced during Jensen's keynote, Blackwell now increases token generation by 40 times that of Hopper. That essentially means a 40x to revenue from AI factories that upgrade from Hopper to Blackwell. And so, of course, companies are going to continue spending like crazy on NVIDIA's latest products when they're delivering results like this. In the short term, anything could happen, and we will likely see more volatility in markets due to the macroeconomic situation as we get closer to April 2nd. But regardless of that, from a long-term perspective, I honestly think NVIDIA's brightest days are ahead. And in many ways, it appears that we are still in the early stages of the AI industrial revolution, which is mind-boggling to think about. Anyways, that's my view of the current situation. Remember to stay calm in this market. Remember to maintain a long-term perspective perspective and do not make any hasty or irrational decisions. With all of that being said, I hope you all have a great rest of the day, and I'm curious to hear your thoughts about NVIDIA in the comments below. Please leave a like on this video so more people will see it. And while you're down there, please consider subscribing. It's free, and you can always change your mind. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.